Remember that time Leon Dreisaitl signed a massive contract extension with the Edmonton Oilers? Oh yeah, it was yesterday. Let's talk about it again. Let's do it again. Hi everybody. Welcome to Better Than Never. <laughs> Yes. I'm not actually inside a women's prison at the moment. The horniest just went up to like 11. Good afternoon. I would say a big f*** you to Nick. Tyler Yerenka must go to Cinco de Mayo. Ty Ty, why won't you kiss me? Better late than never with bag milk. Better late than never with bag milk. It's a better late than never. It's better late than never. Better late than never. Arby's, you don't agree. Long live Arby's. This is the part of the podcast where the audio department want me to tell you how I did not care about Too Hot to Handle. I know this new season, New West season, came out a while ago now, but I just got through it. And I got to say, not impressed. The people weren't shitty enough. The people weren't mean enough. And the audio department.ca... Not only do they want you to book some uh, some recording time down at their fantastic studio, they've got a wide range of instruments available. If you want to record some tunes, go check out their inventory. But more importantly, I think what they want right now is for me to tell you that this latest season of Too Hot to Handle, featuring Bad Lana, Lana, spoilers if you don't know that, it was mediocre at best. It just was. There was nothing. <sighs> I waited so long for that season. I got through Love Island, USA. I got all of it. I got all of it. Then I got all excited, watched Too Hot to Handle, one of my favorite shows. This season just mediocre. They all know what show they're on. They didn't waste enough money. There was nobody who was just a genuine asshole. Well, there was assholes, but like, I'm talking about a guy who just straight up mixes things up. There wasn't that. There wasn't a lady who did the same either. Disappointing. Disappointing. What was not disappointing, however, is I want to touch on the Oilers Nation Open that kicked off on Friday. It's the seventh tournament we've done, and I'd argue this was the best yet. I'd argue this was the best yet. Based on the state of you when you got home from that tournament, I know you guys went out to Greta and had a good time after the tournament was over. Based on the state of you wandering back into this house, I'd say it was a good time. You look like an animal. The fact that your clothes were still on was almost surprising. Listen, when you have a 9 o'clock shotgun start, you're taking get away from you, but I think that I handled myself quite well. I handled myself quite well, but more importantly, this was all about all of you guys that showed up to play. This was about the volunteers. We basically had the Avengers of Oilers fans show up. We had Banjo Guy. He did a full Oilers Nation logo as his face paint. Love that. Shout out to Banjo Guy. McMullet drove up from Strathmore. Him and Chris Palmer. Chris Palmer noted Captain Felton Kisser, who was also there. They were manning the oodle noodle hole, Chris Palmer and Captain Felton. Captain Felton also in full garb. If he wasn't in full garb, I'd have to just, like, government name him right now. But I'm not going to because he was in full garb. He had the captain's costume on, and therefore he is a captain. I just want to thank everybody for making this one a really, really great day. From On behalf of all the staff and of Oilers Nation, I feel like I'm allowed to say it. We're going to have some of the real life kind of tete tates going on tomorrow on the episode of that. So I won't spoil that for you. But what I will say is thank you to the volunteers. Again, the Avengers, the Oilers fans, Avengers, they were all there. To the volunteers who do not dress up, I thank you too. It was great to meet you. It was great to chat. We raised over $24,000 for Gregor's grads. If you don't know what Gregor's grads is, essentially, this is the elevator pitch. It takes students in grade 12 who cannot afford a suit of their own for grad. Gets one tailored for them. We're talking the shoes. We're talking the suit. We're talking the tie. We're talking the shirt, the belt, everything. And at the end of their fitting, they find out that they get to keep the suit. 
it's not just theirs for grad. It's not just theirs for the day, but something that to get to uh, carry forward with them. And this year we raised $24,000. So thank you so much to everybody who played, to everybody who bought super tickets, to everybody who uh, did the on-course activations, everybody who challenged Gregor in the long drive competition to just go straight up against him for his money. Gregor personally was down $2,500 at the end of the day. If you outdrove him, he was matching your donations and $2,500, he wasn't on his game. So that's a new record for money raised. The banquet was fantastic. The food was great. The atmosphere was fantastic. The day was great. So I guess I just want to thank everybody for coming and making this tournament one of the best we've ever done. As soon as the day was over, I could already just, I was already getting excited about next year. It's one of the greatest days. And thank you to everybody who let me take golf swings for you. I did very well, by the way. I'd say that every swing I took on Friday, I think I was best ball for three of them. And that's pretty good considering my whole job was to cruise around and have a good time, chat to people, have some cocktails. Everybody was super cool. And this was one of those tournaments where I'm just grateful for everybody that shows up. I really, really am. You guys truly are fantastic. You're the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Give yourself a round of applause, would you? It's very nice. Very, very nice. Standing ovation, including the yeah guy. Um, before we get into the news, I think that the last place I went, oh, the last place is just a programming note. I was going to do my regularly scheduled program, which is the one you're listening to right now. But then I looked at the voicemail and there are so many voicemails this week. There are so many voicemails and that means one thing. We got another episode of BLTN coming up tomorrow. It's going to be another voicemail episode. That'll be three episodes in a week. How's that to start off your September? Pretty good, right? Pretty exciting? Of course it is. Let's get to the news. The news is brought to you by Star Mechanical. Star Mechanical is one of Edmonton's biggest locally owned and operating plumbing and heating businesses. They've been working within the community for over 20 years, and many of the homes built here in Edmonton over the last two decades have had their plumbing and heating systems installed by Star Mechanical. Go to starmechanical.ca. Help them help you keep your home running smoothly. I'm starting off the news today. I know this is an Oilers-adjacent podcast. We talk about a lot of shenanigans. We talk about all kinds of things on this show. But mostly when it comes to sports, we're talking about the Oilers. But on Friday, we got word that the NHL family as a whole lost one of its shining stars. And so I'm going to start off this week's news with just a tribute, a small tribute to Johnny Gaudreau. Um, I, along with everybody else, was stunned to see the news on Friday morning that Johnny Gaudreau and his brother Matthew passed away after a senseless act. A drunk driver was trying to pass on the shoulder hit both of the brothers on their bike. They were biking home to their childhood home from a wedding rehearsal for their sister who was supposed to get married on the Saturday, I think. I apologize if I screwed that up. But as I saw that news in the morning, it was kind of unbelievable. You know, Johnny Gaudreau has been one of the best players in the National Hockey League since 2014, I want to say when he first kind of cemented himself in his position with the Flames. Of course, if you don't remember, Johnny Gaudreau played one game after getting uh, signed out of Boston College. He scored in his very first NHL game. He then went on to play with the Flames from 2014 up until the end of the 2021-22 season. Without a doubt, he is one of the Flames' most productive players. He is one of the most electrifying players they had. And as an Oilers fan, he was one of the Flames players. And then again with Columbus, that just really frustrated me the most. He was a player who was so incredibly skilled. And because he was a smaller guy, he was incredibly shifty. And those wheels he had and the hands to match were devastating when he was at his best. And the problem as an Oilers fan was he was at his best a lot. I think of, you know, that season that ended in the Battle of Alberta in the second round, Johnny Gaudreau scored 115 points that season, including a 40-goal season with the Flames. In 12 playoff games, he went on to score three goals and 11 assists for 14 points. 
this is a player who was, by all accounts, something that you would kind of build your franchise around. And I, I'm just, I can't believe he's gone. You know, and I, I didn't know much about his brother, Matthew, until I started reading the tributes that came out after the accident. It wasn't an accident. It was a poor decision, frankly. Um, and it's just heartbreaking. His brother, Matthew's got a baby on the way. Johnny just had his second child earlier this year. And now there are two young children who won't get to know their dad. And the third who's still on the way that'll never get to meet theirs. When I think of the accident, all I could think about was the options that we now have to get home safely from a night out. I think about, you know, the tournament we were in on the weekend and how a big part of it was making sure everybody got home safely. And it's devastating to know that the loss of Johnny Gaudreau was such a needless course of action no matter what happens at the trial and the sentencing and i can understand why people are upset as i'm reading some of the comments on social media about what's going on with the court proceedings none of none of that is going to bring johnny and matthew back there's a family who's completely devastated there's a sister who was planning out the best day of her life and her wedding that obviously got derailed instead of celebrating with a wedding with her family now they're planning a double funeral and i just i can't believe that he's gone you know it's not even a week yet but reading the outpouring of support and seeing the you know the memorial that's developing outside the saddle dome it's just sad everything about it is sad and it doesn't matter who you cheer for seeing something like this is just so far beyond hockey and it's a stark reminder that you got to make good choices, especially when you're out there drinking. And you may think you're fine after a beer or two, but make the smart choice and get yourself home safely and make sure that everybody around you is home safe. You know, right now there are fan bases that are just devastated at the loss of a star NHL player. There are families devastated by the loss of two brothers. You know, and I can't even, can't even wrap my head around it. So needless. And I'm just thinking about the Gaudreau's. So I want to start off the news with just a tribute to Johnny Gaudreau, because as much as I disliked him as a player, and as much as it was, you know, we, we laughed at the Flames' expense when he left and went to Columbus, the reality is this was a player that, one, the league's going to is going to miss. Columbus fans are going to miss. Calgary fans are going to miss. But on the more important angle and the more important level, we've got two young dads, one a soon to be and one a father or two, who their kids don't get to see. They won't get to see their kids grow up. We have two wives who are left without husbands, a family without a brother, a son, uncles. I just want to end it off by saying, make the smart choice. Get a ride home. That 25 bucks, 30 bucks, 50 bucks, $100 you spend on a taxi or an Uber to get yourself home is money well spent 1,000% of the time. I don't really know what else to say about it. The outpourings of support have been, you know, heartwarming. I watched the Columbus Blue Jackets press conference today with Don Waddell and a, and a trio of the players and what Johnny Gaudreau meant to them. I loved seeing that the Columbus Blue Jackets are going to fly the entire team up for the funerals. That's a kind of gesture that you like to see from them. But at the end of the day, we should be talking about Johnny Gaudreau showing up to camp, getting ready for the season. We don't get to do that. So get a safe ride home. That's just where we're going to end it. And lastly, I guess I want to give a shout out to Cole Caulfield today. The Montreal Canadiens announced that he will be changing his jersey number to number 13 to honor Johnny Gaudreau. I think that's a really nice gesture from Cole Caulfield. And I would not be surprised at all to see or hear about other players making the same decision. He was one of the best 
And I still can't believe that we're talking about him being gone instead of talking about him being an annoyance on the ice that the Oilers were going to have to shut down. So I don't really know how to transition out of that into the good news that happened with the Oilers. So I'm just going to play a little bumper here and we're going to come back and talk about the dry saddle contract, but still awful, awful news with Johnny Gaudreau. And I'm just, my heart goes out to his family, his wife, his children, his friends, his teammates, same with his brother. By all accounts, those two were very, just great, great dudes. And, uh, this entire tragedy was entirely avoidable. So get home safe, everybody. Be right back. You're listening to Better Late Than Never. What do you need to do is leave a nice little review. Like and subscribe. Next. Getting into the news on an Oilers note, the big thing that happened yesterday morning. First of all, Bob Stoffer coming on to tweet and said, I think this is going to be a very good day in oil country with a sunglasses smiley emoji. Bob, that was needless. I mean, I give you props for it. I give you credit for it. It was one of those moves where I kind of go, Bob just wants us to know he knows. And then obviously the news came out that we've been waiting for all summer. Leon Dreisaitl signed a eight-year contract extension with an annual value of $14 million, which is a total of one hundred and two or a hundred and two hundred and twelve million dollars we've been waiting for this all summer there was never a point where i was concerned about this not getting done i mean as we went through august and when we went through other things you know i go oh i thought it might be done earlier in august oh i thought it might be done before the end of the month but ultimately i wasn't concerned about it where i would have been concerned is if we had gotten into training camp or that the oilers are on the ice for main camp and the big dogs were back in town and they're strapping up and getting ready for the new season and it still wasn't de- done then like by the end of september that's when i probably would have started worrying about it but we didn't even have to Yesterday morning, the Oilers announced that they had signed their German stud, I mean star, to a $112 million contract. This is a great day for Edmonton Oilers fans, and let me explain why. If you're a little bit younger, you may not remember or have suffered the heartbreak of star players leaving Edmonton because the team just, one, couldn't afford it, or two, wasn't a destination. But this signing, to me, as a lifelong fan, triggers and signals the end of that idea that Edmonton is not a destination. It ends the whole notion that, that the best players in the NHL do not want to play here. Leon Dreisaitl is a Hart Trophy winner. He's a 50-goal scorer. He's a perennial 100-point player. And here he is signing a max term deal. And admittedly, he got some money. But like, let's be honest. If he wrote out this last year of his contract, he would have gotten the exact same deal. I mean, a seven year because they couldn't have signed an eight year, blah, blah, blah. But they would have gotten the same money or more had he waited another year and tested free agency. Instead, the Oilers lock up one of their best players and we've got nine more years of Leon Dreisaitl. He is ours forever. Like keep Nuge forever? Done. How about Dreisaitl? You got it. It's truly amazing what the Oilers were able to do here, and just the shift in mentality. I remember Doug Waite leaving because the Oilers couldn't afford him. I remember Cujo leaving because the Oilers couldn't afford him. I remember Bill Guerin leaving because the Oilers couldn't afford him. I remember, and one of the reasons I have a job right now, is Ryan Smith leaving because the Oilers wouldn't pay him. This time, they did not make that mistake. This time, they gave the star player the star player money. And while some people go, oh, well, it's an overpay. How do you overpay one of the best players in the league? You give him what he wants. And you're happy he wants to stick around. The amazing thing is about this contract, $104 million of the $112 million is signing bonus. So essentially what that means is this baby is lockout proof, it is buyout proof, and Leon Dreisaitl also has the no move to keep him at Edmonton for as long as possible. By the end of this deal, Leon Dreisaitl will have signed contracts to be with the Edmonton Oilers for 19 years. Back-to-back eight-year contracts followed 
uh, that followed the entry-level three-year deal that he signed. 19 years of dry sidle. And if you don't think this signing right now triggers or signals what's going to happen with McDavid next year, come on. I can already taste the Leafs fans' tears. I can already see them whining that Connor got overpaid to stay in Edmonton. When the reality is, is you'd pay them anything just for him to go to Toronto. It's not happening, is it? No, it's not. But I was excited. I did an episode yesterday, a reaction episode for the contract. I couldn't be more pumped about it. I couldn't be more pumped that the narrative around Edmonton is that we can keep star players and we will keep star players. In fact, we're going to keep two of the best players on earth in back-to-back off seasons to max level deals. You don't think Connor's eyeing an eight-year contract next year? Come on. But one thing I didn't get to do yesterday is play anything from the man himself. So Waz ripped a couple of clips from the Dry Saddle press conference. I just want to play them because this thing was basically audio porn for anybody who's an Oilers fan because Leon touched on everything you'd want him to say. First of all, I'd like to thank uh, the Cates family, uh, Daryl, Renee, uh, Harrison, Chloe, the kids, um, you know, for believing in me and, um, you know, uh, committing to me and, and committing to my family for a long time. And, um, you know, I take uh, great pride in, in, in being an oiler and, um, you know, always uh, obviously wear my heart on my sleeve. Um, but, you know, I, I love nothing more about wearing that jersey and, and representing our, our city and our great big fans. So um, I'm really, really happy and excited to, uh, yeah, hopefully be an oiler for life. <sighs> Leon, you... Beautiful, beautiful man, you. You beautiful man. Representing our city, our team, our fans. This wasn't just, yeah, he got the bag. He secured the bag. He is now temporarily the highest paid NHL player in, like, in the league. But so what? Well-deserved. Connor's going to pass him next year, and that's fine. But he loves it here. And there's no better example of that. Like everybody goes, oh, well, the Oilers paid of all the money. Like no wonder he signed. It's just blah, blah, blah. Blah, 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 blah. That's what the, oh, that's what most of the internet sounded like yesterday. Don't you think? <laughs> that's what most of you sounded like to me yesterday. Whop, 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 whop. First of all, Leon Dreisaitl went from, he's never going to extend at Edmonton. He's going to go to Boston. He's going to go to LA. He's going to go to San Jose because Cody Cece's there and he's their best friends and blah, blah, blah. Let me tell you something. He signed where he wanted to be. And that's here. He signed here. And I love it. So watching everybody go from, he'll never sign there until he's overpaid. In a matter of minutes is so fucking awesome. Kick rocks, losers. Dry saddle and what it means to him to be an oiler. Get your, uh, you know what? Just lock these in your memory bank because this was, I've listened to this clip a bunch of times now. You know, I, I, I have a hard time picturing myself in a different jersey. Uh, and I know things change. I'm, I'm aware of that. And, and I understand the, the business side very well. But um, for me, I, I wanted to, to be an oiler for, for life, hopefully, and, and for as long as I can. And, um, you know, I thought the option of, of an eight-year deal fit, fit the best for me. With Leon Dreisaitl's $112 million contract, let's just take the gross number. I don't want to talk about taxes. I don't want to talk about agent fees and all the other things that can deduct from his earnings. I want to talk about $112 million. I put together an article yesterday at OethersNation.com that just talks about some of the things Leon Dreisaitl could buy with $112 million. How about 7.46 million jumbo donaires if they average about $15 each? Delicious? Money well spent? I think so. I think so. You can't tell me they're not. How about a Rolls Royce boat tail? This is, as of this writing, or as of today, September 4, 2024, this is the most expensive car on earth that a person can buy, and it costs a staggering $28 million. Would Leon Dreisaitl be willing to spend two years' salary on a Royals Royce boat tail? Probably not, but maybe. Something to consider. What about a yacht? I went yacht shopping for Leon Dreisaitl at yachtworld.com, which is a fascinating website if you've never seen it before. I found him a 207-foot beauty that comes in at only $95 million US. Come on. 
At $95 million US, not only do you have the money to buy the boat, but you've also got some leftover for servicing and maintenance. <laughs> money well spent, my friend. How about a public art installation? Back in the day, the city of Edmonton paid $600,000 for the talus balls that are alongside the white mud drive. Maybe Leon lumps with just handsome face Leon alongside of the road, maybe on the hen day. 600 grand for a bunch of Leon heads on the side of the road. I would absolutely pay for that. And I think he should too. 71.79 million liters of bagged milk. I even went in so far in research that it comes in at around $1.56 a liter in Ontario. But listen, if you're looking for just under 72 million liters of bagged milk, Leon, worth it. Worth it. I also found a castle for you. It is the largest privately owned castle in the Czech Republic. Comes in at 26.5 million euros, which equals around 39.5 million Canadian. And when you consider that you are now going to have, I mean, you've already got about 70 million in the bank from your, uh, your entry level contract in this current eight year deal. Tack on the under 12 million you're going to make from the next one. But you could be a real estate mogul. The more important one that I found that he could purchase, I was looking at music rights. You can buy music rights if you didn't know that. And at $14 million a year, that's your salary, less taxes and agent fees, but we're talking about the gross. Why wouldn't you spend $117,000 on the film score to Shrek? Want to do a Skip the Dishes ad with some Shrek music behind you? You could do it for only $117,000. And given the fact that you make as much money as you do, bargain. What about your own PJ? You and Celeste are going to be getting married. I saw Celeste and Lauren looking at wedding venues in France. How are you going to get there? Why not with your own Gulfstream G600? It's only $51 million US. Only $51 million. You can afford that, Leon. Should you? No. DK probably gives you the PJ, doesn't he? Nobody confirmed that for me ever. It's just something that I imagined in my head that D. Cates, PJ, Leon, where do you want to go? Save some money there, or you can just buy your own $51.5 million. Uh, I also found that the Kelowna Rockets are estimated to bring in $31 million to the Kelowna area every year. Why not buy your former junior team? Offer three years earnings. <laughs> Again, I don't know if those numbers are accurate. I was just doing some Googling yesterday and I thought it was kind of funny. Or I found some impulse buys. I found a rare Pokemon Moncole Metamon. It was only $1,000. That's a bargain. $30,000. You could buy a heart shaped hard cheesy. It's shaped just like a heart. Right? I found a fully automated bandwagon, basically meaning a one man band. All in one. You can make your own tunes, dry saddle theme songs. $59,000. Makes sense. I also found on eBay, you could just spend $25,000 US on a mystery box. What comes in it? Who knows? Or you want to decorate the house? Something nice for you and Celeste? I found a stuffed hyena from a taxidermist on sale now for only $5,000. Given how much money you make, Leon, I am saying those are all bargains for you, sir. If you need help shopping or picking up said items, I would be happy to do so. You just got to let me know, okay? You just got to let me know. Another interesting note about Leon Dreisaitl's contract was we heard rumblings late last week that there might be an announcement coming Thursday or Friday. Obviously, that didn't happen, but Andy Strickland, who covers the NHL and has for a long time, he tweeted out yesterday, the contract between Dreisaitl and the Oilers was agreed to late last week, but in light of the recent tragedy with Johnny Gaudreau and Matthew Gaudreau, and with all respect to those involved, a decision was made to release the news on Tuesday, which I thought was a very, very, very nice touch by the Oilers. Um, I thought it was the only response by the Oilers. Obviously, they weren't going to wait forever to announce that Drysaddle had signed an extension, but doing it on the day where everyone was mourning the passing of the Gaudreau brothers, that wasn't it. So kudos to the Oilers, kudos to the agents, kudos to Drysaddle for keeping it all tight. And for those of you who are whining that he's overpaid, and blah, 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 sounds to me like your team just doesn't have a player that good. You thought you were going to get him, didn't you? Boston fans. New York fans, LA fans, not our boy. No, 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 no. We've kept Nuge forever. Now we've done it with dry subtle. Does this mean that Connor McDavid is all but a guarantee to resign next year? I'm not going to say it's a guarantee, but you're telling me he's not going to want to stick with Leon and Edmonton. You're telling me we're not going to get post to post dry subtle and McDavid career Oilers. Come on. 
Come on. This is very, very exciting to me. Young bag milk that cried over the loss of Doug Waite would not believe what happened. You cried. You cried about Doug Waite? <laughs> Why you gotta make fun of me, Satan? I feel like it's nothing more manly than being in touch with my feelings about the Edmonton Oilers. Okay. I mean, like, even the kids gotta think that's ridiculous. I'm not gonna lie, Bag Milk. I don't think that I would have cried about Elias Pedersen leaving the Vancouver Canucks. Although I don't know, they overpaid him by quite a sizable margin, so I guess I got a lot of time to think about it. The interesting thing is going to be what Evan Bouchard's contract extension looks like next summer. Realistically, the Oilers are going to have 50 million bucks tied up in four players. Leon, Connor, Bouchard, Nurse. Not ideal. When asked about it yesterday, Stan Bowman said, yep, we got a problem, but not today's problem. That's a tomorrow problem. And I kind of th- I kind of agree with that. The cap's going to keep going up. I think that they're going to have plenty of movement in the cap over the next four or five years. Dreisaitl's contract, just like the one he's currently on at $8.5 million, is going to look like a bargain at some point. Now, as he gets into his late 30s, maybe not. Who knows? I am not worried about that right now. Again, I think about Zach Hyman. Oh, my year three is going to be the worst contract of all time. The year three of his contract, he scored 54 goals. I will worry about a lot of this down the line. What I care about now, Leon Dreisaitl, Edmonton Oilers, probably for life. And you love, love, love to see it. (laughs) Changing gears. The boys are back in town. The boys are back in town. Well, at least some of them are anyway. Yesterday, the Oilers released photos of Matias at home. Arvidsson is here couple of the boys, they were on the ice in their practice uniforms. Victor Arvidsson looks sharp in an Oilers uniform, though, I gotta say. First look at him in the practice unis. I thought he looked pretty sharp. I thought he looked real sharp, and just having them back in Edmonton on the ice just makes me excited for the season to start. We are less. We are just over a month away. Opening night, October 9th. We've got a month and five days until the Oilers are back in action for real. We've still got the Young Stars tournament to get through and cover. I saw a training camp in the preseason. Excited about all of it. I'm excited about all of it, especially now that the boys are back in town. In other news, just to wrap things up quickly here, Tyson Berry will be signing a PTO with the Calgary Flams, which kind of, I mean, obviously negates the idea that he will be coming back to Edmonton for a second tour of duty on a PTO. He is going down to the flames on a tryout. I feel bad for him that his career is now at a position where not only does he have to go to Calgary, he has to take a PTO in Calgary on a defensive group. That's just not that good. They're just not. Will they sign Barry? I hope for his sake, you know, I hope they do. He didn't play a lot last year in Nashville, probably feeling fresh. I hope Tyson Berry lands a gig. I just feel bad for him. That's going to have to be in Calgary, you know? I just feel bad for him. And that's how we're going to wrap up the news for our friends at Star Mechanical. Star Mechanical doesn't have expensive rates, and they focus on being as cost-conscious as possible for their customers. Their service and products are installed by uh, that are all reliable, cost-effective, and efficient. They have got a group of experts who are here to help you keep your home running smoothly. Check them out at starmechanical.ca. Ray, what are you receiving, bro? <laughs> like, Scoob, it's better late than never. With bag milk. Zoinks. It is time for the big question. The big question. From our friends at Noodle Noodle. Vegetarian Manchurian is now available for a limited time only, as are the four for $4 torpedo shrimp. Or if you're feeling hungry, you can make it a meal anytime for $6.99 in store, which includes the box of your choice, two spring rolls or a green onion cake, and a fountain pop. Get in on it. Of course, my question this week was a simple one. I just wanted to know, what were your first thoughts on the Leon Dreisaitl extension? You've had over 24 hours to think about it, and I just want to know where your head was at. The Bearded Brad, who I did see on Friday at the Oilers Nation Open, part of the team that won Best Dressed, 
He just said that is a hot bitch contract extension. Love to see that. Tom Kostiak just has the fist pump going, yes. Vic Palation says, can the Oilers put the right pieces around the core four or something like what I've been hearing for nine years? Uh, Vic Palation is a guy who works for us. He's a Leafs fan, though. So just something to keep in mind. Jeremy says, fair market value. It keeps McDavid here, too, which makes me happy. Again, nothing, nothing sealed. On McDavid, but you got to feel like it's pretty, pretty close. Connor actually posted Leon's contract extension announcement in his Instagram story and went, let's go number 29. His is going to come soon. I can't wait. Uh, anyway, Jeremy says fair market value keeps McDavid here too, which makes me happy. I just worry with the big four making 50 million bones, how much cap is left to build a winner fair concern. But again, I'll worry about that later when you have the opportunity to keep one of the best players in the NHL in your organization. You definitely, definitely do it. Tyson says at first I was relieved till I saw the price tag, but you know what? It doesn't matter because Leon dry is going to be an oiler for life, baby. Chris Palmer says first reaction, suck it haters. This is why Leon is my second favorite German. My wife is my first, by the way, happy anniversary, happy anniversary, Karen. So happy anniversary to the Palmers lane says first reaction was fuck. Yeah. Let's keep the band together. Oil, uh, road, rodem, rodemus, rodemus. He just does a clap. Just a clap. That's all you need. McDavid is Markstrom's daddy. Posted a gif from the WWE. Everybody's very, very excited. So the big question for our friends at Oodle Noodle. First thoughts on the Leon Dreisaitl contract reaction. Excitement from Oilers fans for the most part. Jealousy and hatred from everywhere else, which is Part of what makes me so, so happy. I love to hear it. I also love the sadness of others. Sadness makes Satan very aroused. Sadness makes Satan feel good about himself. When you feel down, I get lifted up. And there are a lot of you. In fact, I'd say 31 fan bases that were really fueling Satan's Tuesday. So thank you for that. Of course, our friends at Oodle Noodle, go follow them at Oodle Noodle Graham on Instagram, Oodle underscore Noodle on Twitter. Come enjoy some of the memes that Wanya and I make for you. They're hilarious, I promise. I promise. I wouldn't lie to you, would I? Or wouldn't I? This is Captain Felton from Vancouver. On behalf of all listeners of Better Late Than Never, Zoll Will of Thousands, get fucked. Zola Will of Thousands hasn't made an appearance in a while. We did get to the bottom of it. It was Ari. It was Ari the whole time. The betting segment for Better Late Than Never is brought to you by my friends at Bet365. Open an account with Bet365 today and bet on a huge range of markets. So whatever the sport, whatever the moment, it's never ordinary at Bet365. Use the promo code oily bonus. Use the promo code oily bonus. Use the promo code oily bonus this year i wanted to look at some milestones or this year this week i want to look at some milestones around the nhl we've got some of the other players that are kind of around you know some of the other guys who potentially could reach milestones this year but you never know so this time i'm gonna look at 30 goal scorers in the nhl there's a lot of guys who people expect to score 30 goals, like Kyle Connor of Winnipeg. He's listed at minus 550. Sebastian Ajo, minus 550. A player like Leon Dreisaitl is not even included in here at all, anywhere. But an Oiler who's looking at potentially scoring a 30-goal season or maybe getting close would be Ryan Nugent Hopkins at plus 450. Nugent has never scored 30 goals before. He's been on the, or he has scored. He had 37 uh, in his 100-point season. But that was a couple years ago. Can he get back to 30? I think he can. His shooting percentage was low. Shot totals were low. He didn't seem to have confidence in that zipper of a wrist shot that he normally has. But at plus 450, that is juicy enough that I might consider it. That is juicy enough that I think it might just be an area that I'd like to look at. So Ryan Nugent Hopkins at 30 goals. Plus 450, maybe. 
Looking at the Stanley Cup odds for the upcoming season, the Oilers are still listed as favorites at plus 800, followed by the New Jersey Devils at plus 900, the Florida Panthers at plus 1,000, the Dallas Stars also at plus 1,000, the Colorado Avalanche at plus 1,100, the Hurricanes at plus 1,100, and the Rangers at plus 1,300. Does that make sense to me? Mm, I don't know. Oilers favored, yes, but I was hoping that actually losing Holloway and Broberg would kind of give the Oilers better odds, but they've been stuck at plus 800 for kind of the most of the offseason. I don't know that it's moved at all, in fact. I like to look at these odds on a, you know, semi-daily basis, and so far, there's not a lot there that suggests that the Oilers are going to move at all. So if you're actually looking for better odds in the Oilers to win the Stanley Cup, maybe you got to wait. Maybe you got to wait a little bit until the season actually gets going. You know? Maybe. Maybe. Another area I want to look at that I hadn't got a chance to do yet was looking at goalie wins. So when I think of Stuart Skinner, who's going to be our starter this year, he's going to be tandem with Calvin Pickard. Currently, the line on Stuart Skinner for wins is set at 34 and a half. So 34 and a half wins, meaning he needs to either get 35 to go over or under 34 and a half. He has 34. That is the under, right? So when I think of Stuart Skinner, he's going to play a lot of games. He's going to get backed up by Calvin Pickard, but I don't think Calvin Pickard is going to be carrying the bulk of the load. Last year, in 59 appearances, Stuart Skinner won 36 games. So that gives the line of 34 and a half. That's a great line by Bet365. If you take the over, which I think I will, that is minus 110. But if you take the under, that is also minus 110. You basically got to pick them. Stuart Skinner over... 34 and a half wins, I say yes. And if you're asking what I'm going to sprinkle a couple of shekels on, that's where I'd be putting my money. Shout out to Stuart Skinner. I believe in you, Stu. I believe that that, what would you say, tough month of October, November from last year. I don't think that's going to happen. I think he's actually going to soar past this. I think he's going to get closer to 40, if not over 40. Stuart Skinner over 34 and a half wins at minus 110. That is a, that is a bet I quite like. I'm not going to lie to you. I quite, quite like that bet. Open an account with Bet365 today and bet on a huge range of markets. So whatever the sport, whatever the moment, it is never ordinary at Bet365. Use the promo code Oily Bonus. This is David Bowie from the grave. You're listening to Better Late Than Never. And you should tell your friends to listen anywhere. Hell. And what the hell am I doing, etc. Listen to Better Late Than Never, you idiots. Tell your friends, do it now. You want to see a man, boy? I'll show you a man. Kick me in the jimmy. For Trilogy Oilfield Rentals, it is time for the Righteous Sack Beating. Of course, Trilogy Oilfield Rentals are an established provider of tools and expertise across multiple oil field disciplines, specializing in rentals, pipe recovery, abandonments, and completions. Currently, they maintain full-time operating units in Provost, Weyburn, and Kindersley. What kind of tools do they have? I love this button. Rental tools, fishing tools, coil tools, drilling tools, mills and bits, completion tools, any tool for any job. Trilogy Rentals. The righteous sack beating is where you vent something that's annoying you in your life. That's what this is all about. That's what this segment is for. And since I'm having a pretty good, pretty good day, pretty good week, dry saddle signed, well, this nation open was a success. I got some Wilhawk beef jerky in my fridge. All of this. It's very exciting to me. So I don't really have anything that's bothering me right now. But thankfully, Dukes and Nick both submitted an RSB this week. And I'm going to get to those as guest RSBs. So I'm going to give you the button. You want to see a man, boy? I'll show you a man. Kick me in the jimmy. And I'm going to give you some Dukes. Right. So I've got to be quick because um, in a couple of minutes, I, my, my uni lecture starts. So I guess... Sneaky bonus RSB to me for signing up for business data analytics because who the fuck does that to themselves? I'm telling you, I already have a job. I don't need, you know, anyway, dickhead. But my main beef is going to go out to Facebook, like people you might know, like suggested, whatever. 
fucking because I have like you know work people. I talk to a lot of you know during the day, make calls. A lot, a lot of people from work saved in my phone. I save them with the company logo, so that way I don't accidentally you know, click them, whatever. But then you go on Facebook, and it's like all these people that like big bosses and all this shit that I work with, you know. And I'm like, what? I don't want like. I don't want them seeing what I get up to at work, let alone the dumb shit I post on Facebook. Um, secondly, it's nation folk. Like, it's all cool. You know, I don't mind that. But, you know, I guess for your guys' sake, I'm keeping my distance out of respect for you because I don't want you to have to deal with my shit. Um, just on that note, BM's government name is Roger Jefferson, if you're wondering. <laughs> um, but the third group is just like randoms that i don't have any mutuals with and i don't have their number and it's like facebook's kind of like i don't know man i am out of ideas like maybe you know this fucking random like mm. <laughs> anyway nation folk are fine but the other two categories <laughs> get fucked. i agree man facebook to me like when i look at some of the invites um don't invite me First of all, the only reason I have a Facebook account is because I need it for work. If I didn't have the job I do and need to access like tools like the Facebook business manager and the page manager and the ads manager, et cetera, et cetera, I would not have Facebook. So if you're planning to add me as a friend and hoping old bag milk's going to be there to have a little chuckle with, I'm just probably going to leave you in the pending. I haven't added a friend on Facebook. I'm going to guess in... <clears throat> seven years some of you have been waiting in the pending for quite some time i don't use it i don't use it and that's kind of where i'm at with facebook so dukes i agree with you tis a fine rsb i'm gonna give this button a push and then we're gonna talk to nick you want to see a man boy i'll show you a man kick me in the jimmy what's on your mind nick hey big milk just a uh, little guess right just zach beating here uh People need to learn how to control their dogs. Yes. And train them a little bit better. Yes. You're speaking to me, Nick. Let's go. Let's talk about it. So full disclaimer, I'm a cat person. I like cats more than dogs. That tracks. I've grown up with cats my whole life. I haven't spent a ton of time around dogs, so maybe that's part of it. I'm just way more comfortable with cats than I am with dogs. Sure. But I'm doing an ultra marathon here in six days. So the majority of my summer has been training. And What, part is, a, what is an ultra marathon? Like Dan just nation Dan just ran a marathon. It was like 43 K, which I could not believe that he did. Not that I couldn't believe he did it in terms of like having the skill to do it, but rather just thinking about in my head, 43 kilometers on your feet running. That would take me years, years to accomplish what Dan did. So let me know. I'm curious what a super marathon is. I have no idea. Is it the same thing or is it longer than that? Because super marathon makes me think it would be longer than the 43K or 42.5 or whatever it was that Dan wrote, ran. Hmm, something to think about. Part of this run that I'm doing here in six days has us going right around an off-leash dog area in the Lethbridge River bottom. And it feels like every time I run through this area, someone's dog is... They're obviously interested in me, and I, I understand I'm part of the problem here. But their dog goes AWOL. It just completely stops listening and runs up to me and wants to play with me or just barks at me. And the owner is just standing there like, come back, come back, come back here. And the dog won't listen. I just think if you have not trained your dog well enough that it will not listen to you. And if you don't have, for a lack of a better word, kill switch, you probably shouldn't be letting your dog off leash in a public area. Because what if that was a little kid? What if that was another dog and, you know, something bad happened? But I don't know. Maybe maybe that's just how dogs are and I'm not around dogs and I don't know. But anyway. I am going to jump on here and say, Nick, I have never agreed with you more. I've probably done myself two or three RSBs on this very topic because... I am a dog owner, and I like to think that I'm a mostly responsible one. I'm not going to pretend like Frank is the best trained dog ever. He's not. I don't know how to do it. But what I do know how to do is get some of the basics down. And some of the basics would be, like you said, Nick, recall. So recall is if you call your dog by its name and I go, Frank, come, he better go to you 100% of the time, not half the time, 
not 70% of the time, 100% of the time. Or you do what I do and you keep your dog on leash. Frank is a great dog. He is well behaved. He loves people. He's okay with most dogs. I remember probably telling the story on this podcast of when Frank got bit on the on the face by an off leash, like Shih Tzu sized dog. So a small dog came up and bit Frank on the face off leash. He pinned that dog down because he was understandably upset about getting bit on the face. I got yelled at by the owner of said Shih Tzu when really it was their fault the entire time. So you know what I do? Because Frank's recall is I'm going to say 60%. I keep him on a leash. I keep him on a leash. And that doesn't mean your dog can't get exercise. This is all bullshit when people say that. I have a 50 foot long line. And it's attached to Frank's harness so he can run out 50 feet. And I still have some semblance of control on him. He will never run over to people who are not expecting a dog. He will never run over to other dogs. He will never run out into traffic. He will never run away from me because I have got that mechanism. On normal walks, I have a six foot leash. I also have a retractor leash, which I know some people aren't a favorite, uh, aren't a fan of, but Frank at this point in his life, he's almost seven years old. God, I hate that. I can't believe my dude is almost seven. Fuck. Anyway, he's got, he's where he's at in his life. He just moseys around side me. It just gives him a little extra freedom to run around. The point I'm getting at is Nick is hundred percent right. If you cannot control your dog with the commands and they listen to you 100% of the time, put them on a leash. It is not the general public's responsibility to care for you being a fucking idiot. So, Nick, I'm totally with you, dude. Totally with you. You want to see a man, boy? I'll show you a man. Kick me in the jimmy. So there you go. Right sack beating for our friends at Trilogy Oil Field Rentals. Uh, again, this is normally where I would go, all right, now it's time for the voicemail. But there are so many voicemails that I'm just going to do a separate episode for voicemails. I just, you guys had a lot to say. I want to give you the platform to say it. But this episode would probably be over two hours long if I got to the voicemails in this one. So I'm just going to give you a three episode week. Are you complaining about it? It's free content. I will send you your check back in the mail unless you're a sponsor, in which case your checks stay with me. Do you understand? Of course. Of course. And there you have it. Another episode of Better Late Than Never. Go check out yesterday's reaction episode to the Leon Dreisaitl signing. Today you got this one. And then tomorrow morning, tomorrow afternoon, I haven't decided yet. I got to look at my schedule. We are going to have a voicemail episode of the podcast. So you're going to get duh, three. Not one, not two, but three episodes of Better Late Than Never this week. Hope you enjoy it. Hope you like it. If you want to leave me a voicemail, now's the time to do it. Now is the time to do it. But until then, until tomorrow, I say goodbye, friends. I say goodbye, I bid you adieu, and I say thank you for supporting everything that I do. Go read the article about 10 things Leon Dreisaitl can do with $112 million. I feel like it's worth it. Tyler, why won't you kiss me? Thank you.